Okay, uh, in this next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the softer social skills of running a personal training session. So I would say one of the big mistakes a lot of coaches make early on in their career is emphasizing, overly emphasizing the technical aspects of coaching. And while technical components like biomechanics, program design, uh, physiology, like all those pieces are important. Ultimately, our job as coaches is to first and foremost, build a relationship of trust with our clients. Uh, the more they trust us, the more of a relationship we have with that client, A, the more likely they are to stick around, B, the more they're going to look forward to their session, so the more likely they're going to show up. Uh, and I really do think that that's the underpinning of good coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree? I would agree. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a skill that I, like myself, has uh, found to be challenging to develop. Um, I think when I first started coaching, I was very, like Sam mentioned, uh, like really, really focused on the technical aspect, um, making sure, like, think, like how long have we spent on this exercise? And like, well, how are we doing for time? And like, making sure they're moving properly, really, really like paying attention to the technical aspect and the program design, uh, which is important, obviously. Uh, but I was definitely less practiced in those softer skills and in kind of like, making the client feel at home in the gym. That's something that I feel like I've done a pretty good job of developing over my past couple of years of coaching. Um, and one of the ways that I have found really that helped with that is the way that I, the way that I talk with them. So what I found that I used to do is I would talk, I tended to talk about myself a lot. I would like, they would say one of their experiences and then I would jump right in with one of my own stories about how like I kind of felt that way as well at one point. And I tend to talk a lot. And so that really reflected itself in my sessions. And so I have learned that people like to talk about themselves and we should encourage that. We want them to be talking. Uh, our job is more to kind of direct the conversation and ask open-ended questions, um, ask leading questions, circling back to previous conversations um, and making them feel heard and listened to and really trying to encourage them to chat. Not everybody is super receptive to talking about themselves for the whole time. So if you have someone that tends to not like to talk about themselves so much, then you you can, of course, jump in and kind of chat about yourself. Um, but in general, getting them to talk is, is kind of where we want to be. Um, and different ways you can do that. Like I said, leading questions, open-ended questions. Um, yeah. And tr we, another thing we want to kind of think about is trying to match their energy as well. So if you have someone coming in who maybe didn't sleep so well last night, a little bit tired, a little bit low energy, um, obviously not so psyched to be in the gym and to be working hard. We don't necessarily need to be like in their face and jumping and screaming and trying to get them like super, super hyped up. Sometimes we just need to match their energy a little bit. Maybe we take the session a little bit slower. We still want to try to encourage them to work hard. So trying to be a little bit more energy than them, but in general, we want to try to mirror a little bit and kind of reflect them and that'll make them feel comfortable and kind of listen to as well. Um, yeah. Anything to kind yes. of add on that? Yeah, so I was thinking it might be helpful to actually dive into some of those concepts and break them down and kind of give examples of what they look like. So like one of them that you mentioned was open-ended questions. So for people who don't know, like what is a open-ended versus a closed-ended question? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's you asking me. Okay, cool. Uh, so for example, um, uh, so we had Christmas recently asking how their Christmas went or what's something cool that you did on the weekend and giving them, uh, it's kind of like an essay response question. If you want to think about it, like uh, like school a little bit, mm. not just like a yes or no answer. Yes. You want to kind of give them something to think about a little bit and, and kind of allow them to kind of delve into their, to their answer a little bit more. Um, yeah. I don't know if you have any so good examples. example. <laughs> yeah. Good example. Like going back to that Christmas, uh, concept, it's like you ask your client, did you have a good time at Christmas? It's a very binary question. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. And so oftentimes a conversation with questions like that can quickly come to a halt. So rather than saying, did you have a good time at Christmas? And you can still ask a question like that, but an open-ended question would be like, oh, great. Like you had a good time. What'd you get up to? Mm -hmm. Or who did you go visit? Or mm -hmm. what was your favorite gift over the holidays? Or do you guys have any family traditions that you do? Mm -hmm. What that does is it really opens the gate for them to be able to connect with you, right? Um, versus these questions that are very yes, no, very on, off. If you allow them to kind of, like you said, narrate an essay or a story about their lives, mm -hmm. it's going to allow you to 
open the door. And so by asking open-ended questions, you can start to get to know your client a lot better than if you're just focusing on A, talking about yourself, or B, using close-ended questions. So I hope that kind of articulates the difference between open and close-ended questions. The next skill that you kind of talked about was the idea of asking questions and keeping the conversation going. And so uh, I'm curious what you would have to say about this, but the way I look at this is really just asking an open-ended question, paying attention mm -hmm. based on what they're talking about, asking another yeah. open-ended question. And again, paying attention to what they're talking about. And that's really the, the critical piece here. You need to be a great listener. And so it's hard to give a script on how to do this because every conversation is going to manifest in a different way. But if you hear them, you know, if you ask that open-ended question, how was your Christmas? Or rather, what'd you get up to this Christmas? I went to go see my brother. Oh, very cool. I didn't know you had a brother. Where does mm -hmm. he live? Mm -hmm. Right. And you can start to ask and kind of formulate these conversations. Um, so yeah, just, I think that's a very important skill. It's not only having a great opening question, it's paying attention and then following that up. Mm -hmm. You want to kind of add to that? Anything come yeah, to mind? I think that all that's, yeah, that's, that's definitely how I found the conversations tend to flow. And I find the session uh, is smooth too, when, when you're able to do that. Um, while you're doing this, the reason why this is challenging to do kind of on the fly, is especially if you're a newer coach, like when I was um, trying to run a session while simultaneously doing all of these, thinking about all these conversations and what kind of questions I should be asking is challenging. Like it's overwhelming to try to do so. Um, so I found just with lots of practice and lots of repetition and uh, I, I kind of got a better sense of, of like time-wise how a session runs and then you can do this. You can do these chats while they're warming up or while they're doing a set or maybe between their sets. Um, so that's why this is kind of it under the, uh, the during the session category and not just like the first five minutes. We're trying to kind of can keep this rolling through the session um, and there'll be some natural pauses um, while they're working, for example, or you need to make a correction or you need to explain a movement. Um, but there is something to be said for trying to like continue the conversation during the session. So like if yeah. you're chatting, you pause, explain a movement, have them do it, make sure it's working, do their set and then yeah. pick up where you left off kind of thing. That's a really important skill too, if you can continue. And that shows them that you've really been paying attention. Um, and I think like Sam mentioned, uh, like reflecting on their answers, asking questions about their answers. Um, those are all just things that show that you're paying attention to them. And I think those little things go a long way. Um, and if you're able to do that during coaching then like even better like that's yeah. a great uh, a great skill to have and yeah i i always use the analogy of the first time you drove a car the first time <laughs> you were learning to drive it required all of your focus mm -hmm. right you're focusing on you know 10 and 2 with your hands like using one foot for the gas and brake checking your mirrors regularly and you couldn't really think of anything else the first time you drive mm -hmm. now unfortunately you see people driving texting you, you know sipping a coffee driving with their foot uh, what's happened is they've taken that skill and they've more or less automated it. And when you get into coaching, the more practice, the more repetitions you get, the more you're going to be able to automate that sequence mm -hmm. of events where it becomes a lot more natural. So you can start to focus on these softer skills. Mm -hmm. That said, while you're still learning that process, things like staging the room in advance, things like really trying to have a program in place before the session starts and knowing that program mm -hmm. is going to make that a lot easier because you're not thinking, okay, what is the next movement in the mm -hmm. sequence? You can kind of reflect back to your plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and that allows you to be a lot more present in this session because you aren't really thinking about what's my next exercise selection. Mm -hmm. So really trying to learn and master your script or your plan for the day, I find allows you to be a lot more present with your client. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that's kind of a big, uh, a big piece uh, to kind of highlight that importance of knowing your plan yeah, because it allows sure. you to kind of build that relationship much more. Mm -hmm. um, anything else to add there? I don't think so. I think that's pretty good. Awesome. So I think the last thing I would touch on there is, uh, which I think you mentioned was encouraging other people to talk about themselves, mm -hmm. right? I think it is human nature. Um, we think that, you know, everybody wants to hear about us in our mm -hmm. lives, but I think oftentimes um, relationships are built on a good ear. Mm -hmm. And so encourage people to talk about themselves, ask about their childhood, ask about where they grew up, ask about their career choices, mm -hmm. 
why they chose to go down one route versus another. And I think that's a really great way to also just get to know the mm -hmm. person. Um, I've had some of the most interesting conversations in personal training oh, sessions. 100%. Because you're spending, you know, upwards of two, three, four hours a week with this person. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from maybe their family, you might be the person they see most regularly. So if you open that door with engaging, thoughtful, curious questions, you can learn some pretty cool things about mm -hmm. people. So I would say, yeah, there's definitely an adventure to be had there if you're willing to kind of listen and uh, pay attention. Um, maybe the last thing we could talk about is being flexible with our plan. So we have this great plan. It allows us to be more present because we have a script to follow. Uh, what kind of wrenches might be thrown into that and how do we kind of respond to it? Yeah, so like Sam said, it's so helpful to have like the lesson plan and the set exercises, reps, videos, stage the room, all that good stuff. But that's not gonna help you if your athlete shows up and during your five minute intro conversation, you learned that last night they threw their back out or they rolled their ankle or they are having a really bad headache today. Um, you will get people that come in that can't execute the plan that you have laid out. Um, so something, another skill to kind of refine during your session is going to be that flexibility um, with programming. And that, that comes with, you know, experience as a coach as well. So um, it's not something that's expected, like on day one, to be able to come up with a plan on the fly that appropriately addresses their concerns and like avoids the avoids the problem areas and strengthens the strong areas. But it's something that uh, is important that, that you will face nonetheless. So, for example, I have uh, an athlete that we we do some like back rehab stuff for because she's injured her back previously. And she came in one day and said that her back was like really, really tight. And she didn't think she could do any of the exercises that I had, that I had laid out to rehab her back because it was so, so sore. And she just wanted to stretch for the session, which is totally fine. We could definitely do a mobility session instead of the plan. But that meant that I had to find and come up with an hour's worth of stretches, basically, that weren't going to aggravate her back, but hopefully stretch the appropriate areas, strengthen the appropriate areas and wasn't going to add to her pain at all. And that can be a lot to do in like five minutes during your five minute pre-chat. Um, so what you're always welcome to do is use the computer, use your resources, do a quick Google search. We're not expecting you to have like everything memorized in the end. Like we're not physiotherapists or doctors or surgeons. Like we need some help sometimes so we can look online quick ideas there. Um, if you're going to be doing a full mobility session, you can structure it very much the same as you would a strength session. So like two to three circuits of like three to four stretches, and you can just kind of go through those. Um, and that'll allow you to have a bit of a chatting session too. And you can uh, spend that hour, like we had just said, chatting, questions, learning about them, uh, maybe learning a little bit more about their pain. Um, but it, there's definitely a lot of wrenches that can be thrown your way kind of during a session. So being able to uh, react quickly and have things in mind is super handy. Mm -hmm. um, but resources always there. Other coaches are often around too um, that you can always uh, you grab for a quick piece of advice or or any ideas. I've you know I've grabbed Sam many times to uh, for some help with with clients. So um, yeah, anything to yeah. Add there? I would say even on top of that, you're gonna have scenarios where people show up, and I think you touched on it briefly. But you know maybe they're having a hard day at work or. Mm -hmm. They got in a fight with their spouse or maybe they were up all night for a hundred different reasons. Maybe they're dog sitting and they didn't sleep last night. Uh, and they just come in very low energy. And then in those cases, perhaps we're not necessarily completely changing the workout. Perhaps we're reducing the intensity. So they're going to go a little bit lighter. Maybe we're going to reduce the volume. So we're going to take some sets off. There's a lot of different ways you can modify a workout. It also shows the client that you're receptive to them and you're willing to make adjustments for them. This, you know, like anything needs to be done with a little bit of nuance. Um, so if it's just an athlete trying to avoid exercises, maybe they don't like, perhaps it's worth a conversation, right? Trying to find it and distinguish between I'm tired and today my body and me just need a low intensity workout or am I just trying to avoid something? And, you know, as coaches, you know, people are here voluntarily, except for Emily, she's here on court order. Uh, 
so you need to really make sure that you're trying to structure a program for them. So if Emily's my athlete and she hates doing power snatches, I'm not going to force her to do power snatches just because. So um, definitely be open to modifying and changing workouts, but don't be so tied to your plan. There's a great quote I love. It's, you are not your plan. You are what confronts the obstacle to your plan. And so keep that in mind when you're running sessions that you sometimes you need to modify. And oftentimes that's going to show your clients that we care about them, that we're actually oftentimes creating a more attuned plan for them on the given day. So there's a lot of benefit and merit to being able to modify on the fly. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, don't necessarily be married to your plan if something else, you know, calls for a change. Mm -hmm. yep. Awesome. So those are these many, many soft skills of running a training session. Uh, the hard skills are important. Absolutely. Understanding the script and the structure. But as important, if we had to summarize it, is building relationships mm -hmm. with people. And it's through that foundation of a strong relationship that you're going to see better adherence. You're going to see more commitment to your program. And we really think you're going to see better long-term success. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. All good.